get your stick and fingers oh, out really? of my face. I'm like, oh, man. The, the view is ugly. Mm, I want the beast. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Hello. And welcome to our channel. Today we have a new person here, Natalie. She's with us for almost three months. And here is her debut here. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you will enjoy this fragrance review with us. Today, the topic will be five fragrances. Some of them just new releases. Some of them just we get recently. Two of them absolutely new. And some of them I just received as a, as a sample. So I decided to, to show it to you as well, since we don't have it here. Let's start with this most new one for both of us. It's a sample that was sent to me from Europe and these two fragrances are pretty popular in Europe, but uh, no one knows about them here in, okay. in North America. The company called Francesca Bianchi and the fragrance called Sticky Fingers. Like in a song. Like, oh yeah? In a song. I you get your sticky fingers oh, out really? of my face. You don't remember? It was a very popular track. Hmm. You know, today is more patchouli. I agree. Yes. But on the first day, when we just received it, maybe because I transportation, I was, I was impressed by the name, mm -hmm. and it smells for me like sticky fingers, like literally, like you eat cooked rice with your hands, and this feeling of the, this kind of like something sticky on your on your hands if you eat the rice with your hands. Okay, I feel more like a raisin like a mastic yes more closer to this side it's also sticky so can be patchouli, patchouli is the prominent <clears throat> one let's check the notes something sweet also in there i cannot get it if it's a fruity part or maybe patchouli gives this chocolatey since you mentioned something and it's evoke like smell memories for me i think it was a somewhere in europe they have kind of dish with the sticky rice, with the raisins inside. Maybe Indian uh, yeah, delight? Yeah, Indian. Indian yeah, yeah, delight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe. So that's uh, how it's just right now smells for me. Yes, maybe you're right. But I forgot the name of this delight. The, the view is ugly. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like in the liquid, <laughs> <laughs> like something is drowning in the liquid. But. You know, it have an impressively good rating on Fragrantica, 4.13, so which is, which is really good. Yeah, patchouli, tobacco, oris, leather, tonka bean, castorium. Castorium, I don't feel it all. Me too, but I usually I'm very sensitive to castorium and I kind of avoid this part. Sandalwood, cinnamon, heliotrope, musk and coriander. For tonka bean, not even a hint. I cannot recognize it. For tobacco, yes. No leather for me too. No leather, yes, yes. Patchouli, Patchouli I can yes. feel oris. I can feel the buttery oris. And maybe a bit of sandalwood, this kind of creamy sandalwood, not the salty one. Yeah. Absolutely unisex. I think it's kind of different way of gourmand fragrances. If you want to smell gourmand, like patchouli gourmand, but not too much, in a different way. Yes, not it's, straightforward. It's yeah, it reminds something about the kind of food, but I cannot I just point. Like for me, it's uh, still fragrance still wearable wearable fragrance with a hint of something gourmand but not sweet gourmand something connected to the food but not the food not street associations next one another one from uh, europe as well which is popular there lorenzo villarassi tin mm -hmm. so i think tin dinesh as pierre tried to, to translate to me okay should be like white skinny face like when you oh, a pale face Pale face. Okay. Pale face. Okay. For me, it's like something. Like Snow White. Mm, yeah, yeah. On the clean side, on the soapy side, definitely yes. something on the way of a uh, Blanche Barberado. But Blanche is much more aquatic compared to that one. Yeah, maybe the muse. Uh, maybe the muse. But the muse close. have yeah, yeah, more dry. <laughs> yeah. More dry. More like clean, soapy detergent, but dry one. Yes, but I like this one. I think I use something like that for the textile, you mm -hmm. know, to aromatize my space at home. But I think this one is very sophisticated, so it can go to office, for example, because it's a clean yeah, perfume. I don't know, it's... Something powdery inside, I think, I don't know, it's, yes. is it... Also iris? Iris, or maybe, maybe violet, because violet sometimes also have this kind of aspect. Yes, maybe even violet leaf. 
a bit musky. Musky, yes. Aldehydes, maybe. The carrot part. Maybe it's Iris giving me this. Oh, they did not white. disclose it. They said that powdery notes. Powdery notes. Rose, ylang ylang, jasmine, tonka bean, heliotrope. Heliotrope give this powderiness. Okay. Musk, sugar, jasmine. I would not say that the flower part is very bright in here. Yeah. Powdery note is yes. What gives this freshness, like this soapy vibes? Hard for me to understand, like because. Yeah, when you hear jasmine, it's something else what you can imagine. But that's a, an interesting one. Yeah. I would wear it. This is on a clean office style fragrance. I would say a bit more feminine, but depends. Depends if you're okay with the musky fragrances. Yeah. Like clean powdery musky fragrances. No, that can be beast. Or not beast. <clears throat> okay, okay, I see. I see. I see that you would want it. Okay, uh, we will open the new bottle of Tilia from Marc Antoine Barra. He just released it. Oh no, the how it smells. Okay. I was just asking about that fragrance the day before we received that. Oh, because I see that all the you know everybody's starting talking about Tilia. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting, and it's a. Uh, I guess it should be honey perfume. I was just wondering, like, For what me, can I get? Floral. Floral? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. As I remember, Do the honey note is announced. Mmm. Maybe it's like different in design because it always was a golden, golden atomizer, and today is a red one. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, what did they want to say with this redneck? Mmm. <laughs> it's different from the previous yeah, fragrances the, beca the because I, I thought it would be the style because still Canton Beach created this fragrance and I thought it would be the style of the Canton Beach but you know for me it somehow reminds me of a uh, Tiriac. Do you remember we ordered the Tiriac to try the, another his creation for Latafa? No I don't think I've I think tried we have it. somewhere now more and more it smells for me like this tiriac a bit caramelly floral but maybe honey yes yes so to me it's light but I still can feel the DNA of the brand I don't know which notes are repeating in here maybe it's um, metallic notes yeah, or yeah. mineral I would say yes yeah, something metallic here but much more softer than we have a lot other fragrances with metallic note it's yes. not so prominent you can feel it in the background but not nothing too impressive like too expressive too punchy i agree and if there is honey or maybe flowers it's not as sweet as i expected i would try it on my skin and flower for me is something on the style of the violet maybe oh, not the violet the lily something like white floral let's see i cannot get it a linden blossom never smelled this in my life what which blossom linden i don't know how to smell it jasmine amber fix georgie wood also never <laughs> never heliotrope broom and vetiver no honey at all okay but maybe this bloom gives this wipe <laughs> you know for me now more because i see uh, linden blossom how it looks and for me it somehow reminds me of the honeysuckle flowers okay. uh, and a uh, honeysuckle but honeysuckle is more kind of oily and a deep but uh, that one is like honeysuckle diluted with something liquid and a little bit cold inside yes totally agree maybe uh, and no uh, mineral or no, no, no nothing mm -mm. that's interesting but there are many notes that we don't know. There's so many absolutely new notes. Uh, Linden Blossom is not like not used too much. Jasmine, yes. Ambrofix, I think it's kind of Ambroxan. Georgie Wood, don't have any idea how does it smells. Heliotrope, yes. Broom, it's really hard to feel the broom inside the fragrance. And the, and the vetiver. I would not say it's the brightest one mm -mm. in this fragrance. Maybe they close some kind of notes. They prefer to keep it in a, keep it in hide, hiding here. I'm curious about the performance, like I'm not sure if it is gonna last. I'm not sure as well, but uh, since this is the creation of Kentin Beach. Maybe it's gonna... It's gonna last, you know, yes. like with the Valaya, when you smell it from Parfum de Mali, also creation of Kentin Beach. When you smell it, you feel like it's just so soft, just white florals, but almost invisible white florals, undetectable, but it stays 12 hours. 
Yes, that's true. And it projects a lot. Even for Fleur Narcotique, a lot of people, when they smell, it's like, oh, it's too light, too light. But when they start wearing it, and it's like projects like for one kilometer from you. Mm -hmm. So, Tilia Pretty can be this kind of the style. When you smell it and you feel, mm, too soft. Mm, I want the beast, but the beast somewhere inside. The beast is sleeping right now. Yes, and maybe it opens only on the skin. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So you have the, to test it. Yeah. So I think the beast is sleeping right now at the moment, but when you apply it, you start to feed the beast, he will feel your blood and it starts. Magic happens. Yeah, magic happens. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, would it be the feminine or masculine for you? Absolutely no gender. Like, oh. Yes, because I'm trying to get rid of the like gender stereotypes, so I can see it absolutely on anyone, no age, no gender. I see the new trend, uh, I think it started from uh, Turina 23, when they released the, uh, released the latest fragrance. And this is trend for kind of unisex fragrances or masculine fragrances as well, white florals. Here's yellow florals, but white and yellow florals, they're close to each other. That's kind of trend right now, like to, to break the stereotypes, like no more rules. Everyone can wear whatever they smell and whatever they like. But for you, it's... Uh, for me, it's more feminine. More feminine. Um, I love fragrances like this, like even Fleur Narcotique, I can wear on me. Mm -hmm. I like it, but not every time. It's just some kind of mood should be for that. Okay. But not not the everyday. I wouldn't say it's everyday fragrance that I would like to to wear. And this one is not in my style of the fragrances. Yes, it's a. Uh, it don't have, like for me personally, fragrance should be clean, fresh, or something mystique, something underneath behind the fragrance. I don't feel it here. For me, it's kind of clean floral, but nothing extra for me personally. But uh, we all different and uh, no judgment case. Next, Next one. one. Lorenzo Pazalia. Mm. Uh, launch Sangria. We almost sold out. I think when when the video will, will be uh, launched, it already will be sold out. <laughs> fruity, fruity. Tutti fruity. I tried to find my association with this fragrance. And I know that for you it's like sweet and fruity. But you know, for me, it smells like green tea in the beginning. Because I, I just try to find like this feeling of the, what is this green inside? Like the, even not the green, herbal tea. First impression, when you just smell it. Then it moves to the fruity part, yes. Wine, fruity, this sangria vibes. And uh, since we already wore this fragrance, I would say, on my skin, it goes to something. Maybe you remember I told you like it's something mossy on my skin. Yes. I wasn't like correct with this. It's not a mossy one. It's something like herbal tea. Now I'm absolutely sure that, but it will be like more like soft and kind of herbal, relaxed on the skin. Like mossy as well. It's kind of something soft, dry, and relaxed. And that one uh, more herbal tea. I, even right now, I, I cannot unsmell it. Leaves of lindenberry, this herbal, soft, a bit something on the, on the background, something berries. This one is initial. Yeah, definitely the second stage will be for me this fruity wine. And then it turns back to this soft herbal feeling. That's interesting. I can understand your point, but to me it's uh, definitely, again, like a fruity bubble gum. Maybe the herbs and the mint in the bubble gum, I guess it's the same, but the way we feel is different because of the experience, probably. But I love it, the way it performs. It's and with the mint, I agree. Like, as soon as you said mint, and like, I'm like, oh, mint! <laughs> I, I don't think there is mint in it, <laughs> but something gives the feeling for sure. <laughs> True. Um, but you know, if we open the Fragrantica and we will see the pyramid, it's... Uh, endless. We, like, yeah, it's endless. With Lorenzo Pazzari, it's always endless. The pyramid is something, I don't know, like... Yes, I created a picture for that and I couldn't find a place for each uh, node. So, yeah. yeah, it's really Let's overwhelming. Let's see. So, it starts with blood orange, bergamot, green note, ginger, lemon, mandarin orange, cinnamon, pink pepper, cloves, middle nose, black currant, red wine, raspberry, grapes, peach, apple, Turkish rose, and cardamom. And 
<laughs> and that's not all. There's also the base note with brown sugar, patchouli, vanilla, vanilla bean, tonka bean, <laughs> benzene, must, birch, sandalwood, cedarwood, amber. Birch. I'm really tired to, to like to read all of this stuff. Oh my goodness. His fragrance is always bright, vivid, explosion of everything. And since there's so many things inside, every one of us smell it in a different way. Like because of our history associations, like uh, memory uh, with, with different fragrances, this different products and everyone have a different uh, associations. But I see, yes, bubble gummy, that's most often that people say uh, here, something bubble gummy, fruity, bright. Yes, my experience is quite different, but we all have a different. Maybe this tea that I'm drinking right now, give me this point of view and uh, um, give me these associations. I think that is pretty good fragrance for, especially for heat, even yes. even though there's wine there, a lot of vanilla there, still absolutely wearable among with the summer hammer and now that the two creations I think they will start to compete with each other when the heat wave will come because both of them are absolutely gorgeous for, for the hot weather. And there are more, like Dream Sea, Black Sea are also, I This think, aquatic, I, it, it, aquatic is just not for everyone. Yes, but for the hot weather, I think yeah. it's even better. Like, for myself, it's the best. Like, you can refresh yourself and it's like a sip of water when you're thirsty or uh, heat. I personally like aquatic, for me, it's something that um, just a kind of meditating fragrance. I just take it for something when I'm... I need to replenish my energy, just relax, to be, be calm. For me, aquatic fragrances is uh, in that way. Okay. And since I don't have a time for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you never wear that, right? Uh, no, I, I like really Aqua di Sale from Perfume Room. I absolutely love it. But last year, I, I just don't have a chance to wear it. But I absolutely love it. And sometimes I just use it as a, as a smelling therapy. You know, when you, when you try it, I have one empty bottle at my desk. And just, I just smell the cup, just to feel this ocean vibes, stay alone from everyone, like to be absolute, like for, for a minute, like have my, my minute, but I don't have it, it's time for that for Let's do the beast. Okay. I'll be honest, we don't want to order this fragrance. It just happens. Send it to us with a mistake. Thing is called Delirious. Oh no, no, Delicious from Rinja. This is a special edition that they made for some Turkish brand. Somehow they send it to us and uh, we cannot return it. Like, we can return it, but I, I don't want to spend too much of resources for returning it back, resources of the company, of Rainier company. So we decided to leave it, give it a chance. What is this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you smell the first, like, what is this? Oh my God. But you know, today I smell more chocolate. The, but the first day was like, yeah, it was absolutely straightforward in... Um, Castorium and Sivet. Yes, very, very animalic. Extremely animalic Indolic. vanilla. Indolic vanilla. So something sweet, but I just think the vanilla is not listed like a main note, but something like sweet like vanilla. This absolutely stinky <laughs> twist of... Of the, yeah, different materials. Yeah which gives this animalic feeling. I'm trying to be uh, like uh, accurate with, <laughs> with my words. I'm trying to find the words because it's like to describe it straight it would sound bad. So I don't want to say uh, this word. You know, this fragrance is absolutely gorgeous for people who look for edgy fragrances. This is edgy fragrance. Mm -hmm. This is something absolutely different. Absolutely, definitely eyes will look at you. Like all eyes in the room will look at you when you come. Projecting, <laughs> yes. I remember the first day when we received the pier, sprayed it. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, I was sitting, I think, how many meters here? Like maybe seven or eight meters away. And like, what is this? Who did this? Now I was sure what is that. And I asked like, who <laughs> applied this delicious sort of thing? Like, what's that? Who did that to me? Uh, <laughs> What else? Tobacco in there? 
Yeah, something tobacco or maybe patchouli. I'm not sure if there is chocolate in it, but if it's patchouli, yes, it, it's definitely the chocolatey part of patchouli. Chocolatey animalic for me. Let's, yeah, so let's the, see. This yeah. one is for people who are searching for something like an art in fragrances. Like when you want to wonder what the artist wanted to say, this is definitely where you should go to. But to me, it's like masterpiece can be in museum, but not in my place, not in my drawer. Dark chocolate. No. Dark chocolate, okay. Orange, anise, yuzu, labdanum. Another thing that gives this animalic part, honey. In the most of the fragrances, right. that's why I try not to bring too much of honey here, <laughs> because in the most of the fragrances, honey have this facet of a dry piece. I'm sorry to say that, but it's... <laughs> that's true. That smells like this. Honey always goes, not always, but in the most cases in the fragrances, it's like... In this case, uh, for sure. Dried fruits, castorium, patchouli, civet, woody notes, amber, sandalwood and musk. So both castorium and civet, just, plus just, honey, yeah. patchouli... Yes, yes! And people said it's on the way of Symphonium by Xerzov. It's not the same fragrance, but it's on the way. And not on the way with this one, because of the chocolate and when we tried the Symphonium. Oh no, not Symphonium, Ceylon from uh, Xerzov. We tried, it's also honey and it's also have the same Do we aspect. Have it? We don't have we, ha we had it as a sample. Oh, okay. Before we decide uh, to... Ceylon? Yeah. Ooh. Sounds like something tea. No. No? No. Okay. Guys, never buy this blindly, that fragrance without smelling. For that one, mm, I would say <laughs> as well, not safe blind buy. What Smells say? expensive and quality. This makes my tongue water. The combination of bitterness and balance, balance sweetness he, hit my senses, even that I could wear this myself. Okay, so people have different experiences in their life, like yeah, somebody definitely. feel it like a delight. I think uh, that's a good fragrance for a person who look for the challenge. Yes. Yes. And that's all. I think on, the, on that way we will stop thinking about this fragrance. Let's do the ranking. Starting from the first, I like this one, Teint de Neige. To me, this is the first because I really prefer the clean perfumes as my everyday perfumes. So to me, these kind of fragrances are always the first. So the second one, I would choose the fruity Sangria. I love the white. I think it's pretty easy to wear. You, you don't have to think like, oh, I'm going to somewhere today to the restaurant. What should I wear? You just apply it and you go anywhere. It's safe, but very nice. So the third one, I would say Tilia. I'm not sure that I'm gonna, like I, I want it in my drawer, but I would try it for sure because I'm curious how would it perform on my skin. Number four is uh, Sticky Fingers. Not that I like it a lot, but just number five is too much for me. So. <laughs> four, five. So if it's for me, mm, I would say number one, yeah, Sangria. Just re-smell them and uh, the vibes is something delicious, good, fresh, herbal, whatever we need for summer. Number two will be Tilia, even though it's not the fragrance for me, because you know, it's more and more remind me of the honeysuckle and I absolutely love how it smells. Not wearable for me personally, but I like the scent, the slight liquid wipes, a bit cold, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Not for me, but really nice. Number three, you know, from these two samples, even though I, when they sent it to me, this, uh, the samples, I was curious because it's number one in a, I think it's Netherlands, uh, these two fragrances, uh, number, like, not number one, in top five. These two fragrances in top five in the Netherlands right now. And I decided like, okay, maybe we missed something. I'm not impressed. Like, sticky fingers, patchouli, but kind of... Interesting, but not unique. Not unique, kind of like, like too soft, too like, I don't know. And the um, tenderness is just not my vibe. I hate soapy feeling on me. I just hate this because <laughs> on my point of view, why I should spend, spend 200, 300 dollars on the perfume to smell like soap for nine dollars. It's just my point of view. No, it's okay. It's, yeah. it's good to have different opinions. Yeah, yeah. Like, to me, it's super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, know, I know a lot of people like this, like this feeling, like to layer this, and they, it gives them like 
clean vibes feeling refresh the energy for me exactly. it's much easier to go with a something like white cedar wood or bergamot that refresh you it's my opinion but uh, with this um, it's just not my vibe so i will not run them because it's just not my vibe for me they are all equal and number three yeah will be uh, uh, delicious anyway it's edgy i know that it's edgy i think i need to give it a full like a chance to the food to Are you the going to spray it? Not today. I need. A, I need. A, I need my nose. <laughs> but uh, for some occasion, I think I would give it a chance just to try because in most of the cases, animalic fragrances give such a interesting, alluring, sexy vibes around you mm. when they develop on your skin. Maybe. Like it happens with a uh, absolute aphrodisiac as well. It happens with brosilian from uh, Soradora. It's really, really animalic, but when you apply it on the skin, it's kind of magical. Something that charm you. They just, just it's calling you. Like I don't know. Um, so I think I need to give it a full wear to understand. Still, sangria number one. On this pleasant note, I would say thank you for watching us. Thank you. Subscribe and uh, please comment. What do you think about this fragrance? Or come to the store to try them. And a bientôt. Stay fragrant. <laughs>